Hey guys, I come to you today in complete fear of the man I'm about to present to you. A man who got kicked out of the Cossacks for having a violent behavior. How is it even possible to be too violent for the Cossacks? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Nah, man, that's way too far. Just leave. Get out. Fine. The soon-to-be Mongolian Buddhist warlord, Roman von Ungern Sternberg, was born where all Mongolian Buddhist warlords are. In 1886, in Austria, to a noble Baltic German family. But don't worry, Austria was spared from the terror that was young Sternberg, because he did most of his terrorizing, oh, sorry, I mean growing up in Estonia, which at the time was a part of the Russian Empire. And by terrorizing, I mean at 12 years old, he strangled his cousin's pet owl for no good reason. And during classes, he would sometimes randomly throw textbooks out the window and ask the teacher if he could go get them, but would never return. Some say he's still looking for his textbook today. So anyways, basically the guy you don't want to give a sharp pencil to. Or scissors. And maybe an exacto knife during our class. Anyways, don't think for a second that it was just a coincidence that Sternberg was the way he was. Because his own father had his fair share of insanity himself. He stared at rocks for a living. Yeah, a fucking geologist. Can you believe that? And it's not just my bias. He actually was eventually put into an insane asylum. So yeah, this is what we're working with. So there's a few things you should know about Sternberg. He was a 99 monarchist, like the type that believes all the commoners cannot judge what a king does because they just couldn't comprehend the royal thought process. A 99 apocalyptic, which, in his defense, makes a bit of sense because Russia in the early 20th century was in such a weird place. And, most importantly, he was a 99 Mongolian enthusiast. Like seriously, it was crazy. He was like a disgusting mix of toxic K-pop stands with a bit of socially exiled body pillow grooming anime weebs and a hint of violence. Actually, never mind, a whole fucking handful of violence. Stir it up a bit, I recommend about 3-4 to four times, put it off to the side, maybe dip in a little finger if you're feeling it too, if you're feeling frisky, and bada bing, bada boom, you got yourself an owl killing Sternberg. He went even as far as to say he was a descendant of Genghis Khan. I mean, he looks just like him, I'm convinced. Ah, uh, never mind. He was also a 99 degenerate, and the greatest testament to that was his experience with World War 1 and all the great fun he had. I'm talking charging up on a horse straight into machine guns and trenches. If you thought Roosevelt was fearless, let me introduce you to Roosevelt's degenerate little Estonian brother, born with all the sheer stupid luck a mortal man could muster. He was doing all of that during a battle where about 1 out of 15 men came back home. And somehow, somehow, Sternberg was that 1 out of 15. And obviously, there came a point when both armies just stopped and looked at him like a living war god or something. I don't know, at least that's what I would have done if I was a German during World War I on the Eastern Front. Just totally mesmerized in fear of the Russian man just completely running laps around the battlefield. Are you seeing this? Um, yeah, what the fuck? 99 luck. Of course he thought he was a god. I'm almost close to making that conclusion myself. After reading some of the shit he supposedly did in his life, he ended up getting the St. George's Cross, the highest award available in the Russian army, for the suicidal amount of bravery he showed on the battlefield. But sadly for Sternberg, it was too late to mean something because it was revolution time and the Bolsheviks were spreading like COVID in suburban India. Oh. Too early for COVID jokes? My bad, my bad. This severely upset the 99 monarchists. He tried fighting them, but as we know, the Bolsheviks were here to stay. So now I think we're on chapter 4 of Sternberg's life. And in this one, he decided to take his homicidal talents down to Mongolia. The man absolutely loved Mongolians, who were at the time fighting the Chinese for independence. Should I make a joke about that? No. Anyways, as I said before, now's the time for the Mongolian Buddhist warlord part of Sternberg's life. I'm talking Marian Manchurian princesses. Um, um. Do you think he ever shuts up? Bow, bow. We're taking you to safety. Come on, Bob. Um, sit down, bitch. Um. Saving Mongolian rulers and leaving no witnesses. Taking over the goddamn capital, Urga, and looting Chinese businesses. And most importantly, banging everybody's mistresses. Actually, I'm just joking about that last part. In his militaristic Buddhist sect, he practiced the unthinkable. Celibacy. Ha, huh, see? I knew we had something in common. Along with celibacy, he also practiced, and this one's a personal favorite, the limitless use of alcohol, hashish, and opium. Keyword limitless. <laughs> 
What a legend. Anyways, I should talk more about his military exploits because they were also as interesting as he was. He ended up pulling a total Genghis Khan out of nowhere and lit up campfires all around the capital city of Urga, making it look like he had way more troops than he truly had. And wouldn't you know, it worked like a charm. The Chinese slowly started retreating and the victorious outnumbered Sternberg suffered around 60 casualties opposed to the Chinese 1500. Sternberg became a bit of a god in Mongolia to say the least. So much so that the Mongolians themselves claimed him to be the reincarnation of Genghis Khan and the god of war. Which, coming from a Mongolian, is probably the greatest compliment a man can ever receive. And who better to receive it than the owl-choking, Jew-kicking, Bolshevik-swinging, Chinese-killing baron, 99 God of War. As cool as it was, taking over a capital and being the literal living God of War. Sternberg didn't quite win the Russian Civil War, but that's okay because now he was gonna build a pan-Mongolian empire and what better place to start than Russia. Sadly for Sternberg though, turns out while he was busy in Mongolia, the Soviets were getting way stronger and now they turned their full attention to Sternberg and like in all true Sternberg fashion, he was the one to meet them and in a blatantly retarded suicidal cavalry charge back into Russia, Sternberg's luck or talent finally ran out. At last, the great god of war was finally stopped in his tracks and after a short Six hour joke of a trial and a nice little photo shoot, the mad baron was executed. Allegedly, his last words were, But the world has never seen a terror and a sea of blood like the one that is coming now. And oh god, was that true. Ah, Mad Baron, Mad Baron. What an extremely fascinating historical character. 99's all across the board. You'll have to see it. Anyways, without further ado, Sternberg gets an extremely high 95 overall rating. My reasoning for this is because seeing that this was the early 20th century Russia, and differentiating facts and fiction is almost as hard as guessing a guy's age just based off his voice. I'm 78. So, in other words, to keep my conscience clear, if all is to be believed, he would have 100% been the first 99 overall rated character. He's just way too crazy not to give a 99. I think all I have left to say is, made a bloody baron rest in an unmarked grave, like his great idol and ancestor Genghis Khan. <laughs>